The Kings continue to take two steps forward and one step back. We'll talk about the latest setback in Dallas. We'll also talk about what the Kings are going to do with Brant Clark now that he has officially played nine NHL games. All that and more coming up on this edition of Locked on LA Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on YouTube, please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. At last check, we were at 822 subscribers, looking great for another 100 subscriber month and to hit our goal of 900 by December. Thank you so much for your support of the YouTube channel and the podcast as well. My name is Eddie Garcia. I am your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for almost 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the Puck Podcast, a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 16 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for 30 plus years. Time to talk about game number 12 on the season for the LA Kings last night in Dallas, Texas against the Stars. And it was the second of back-to-back games on this five-day, three-team road trip for the LA Kings. And a very interesting lineup for the LA Kings because they decided to go with 11 forwards and seven defensemen. The top line was what we've seen recently, Andre Kopitar at center, Gabe Velarde on the left side, Adrian Kempe on the right side, Philip Deneau centering the second line, Victor Arvidsson on the right, Trevor Moore on the left. The third line, Rasmus Kupari at center, Carl Grunstrom on the right, Kevin Fiala on the left side. Uh, But just two forwards on the fourth line with Blake Lazat centering, Arthur Kaliev on the right side. Uh, During the game, we would see at times Adrian Kempe playing on the uh, off wing on that line and also Kevin Fiala as well. So they were getting extra shifts during the game. Uh, The defensive pairings were Drew Doughty and Mikey Anderson, Sean Dursey and Matt Roy. Uh, Alex Edler and Sean Walker with rookie Brant Clark in the mix as well. Cal Peterson was in net for the LA Kings. Quentin Byfield still out with an illness. Jarrett Anderson Dolan also out of this game and Brandon Lemieux as well. And of course, Alex Ayafalo is still on injured reserve. So why did the Kings go with 11 forwards and seven defensemen? Uh, and the answer is we don't know. We can only speculate Afterwards, head coach Todd McClellan was asked about it, and he was basically vague and evasive, um, just said something to the effect of, that's the lineup we decided to go with. So I think the translation uh, can be reasonably, um, you know, I believe that there's an injury to someone that he doesn't want to reveal. Um, There was talk that I believe Jarrett Anderson Dolan may have taken the pregame warmup and then uh, did not play. And we know that Victor Arvidsson is out an illness, Quentin Byfield currently with an illness. So maybe there's something going through the team a little bit and they don't want to divulge that necessarily. Um, you know, hockey has always been very evasive about what they're going to say about why players are or are not in the lineup, but it seems to be a reasonable, uh, explanation for why the Kings would kind of unexplicably go with 11 forwards and seven defensemen. Um, so that, that was the explanation, basically no explanation. That was the lineup they decided to go with. I think it's, like I said, I think it's reasonable to assume that there's some sort of illness or injury going on with a couple of the forwards. And that's why we saw just two forwards on the fourth line with Kempe and Fiala, uh, shifting in and out there uh, in the mix. All right. As for this game against the Dallas stars, uh, in the first period, Kevin Fiala would take a tripping penalty. Uh, Jamie Benn of the Stars would pass the puck from behind the net to the left faceoff dot. Rope Hintz would score for Dallas. Matt Roy couldn't get over into the shooting lane in time. Um, not the most dangerous shot in the world, but Rupe Hintz is a, is a big sniper. Um, and so that was the lone goal of the opening period. Second period, Kevin Fiala, who has very quickly proven himself to be the best passer on the team, made a great pass from the Kings blue line. Up ahead to a streaking Carl Grunstrom, who was at the Stars blue line. Grunstrom put a good shot on net, but Dallas goalie Scott Wedgwood would make the save. But Kevin Fiala, hustling on the play, was there to put in the rebound on a nice backhand shot, tying the game up at 1-1. And the hustle on that play by Kevin Fiala and the skill to score that goal was tremendous. Um, Again, consider this for a second, right? 
Kevin Fiala is making the pass from his own blue line up ahead to the other team's blue line. By the way, another great pass. This guy knows how to pass the puck. All right, so the player at the other team's blue line, Carl Grundstrom, skates in and gets a shot. The rebound then comes to Kevin Fiala, who has skated from his own blue line all the way down the ice and put in a backhand rebound. Um, <laughs> that's tremendous. Uh, just great work by Kevin Fiala. Not only the hustle uh, and the speed, but then the accuracy to be able to get there on his backhand and put it into the net, uh, showing that he's a goal scorer. And that's why the Kings are paying him uh, a lot of money this year. So one of the great greatest plays I've seen this season by the LA Kings, uh, and it was just hustle and skill by Kevin Fiala. Fantastic job to tie up this game at 1-1. Uh, so about five minutes into the second period, the game was relatively even. Dallas had 20 shots on goal. The Kings had 15. Uh, but then things very quickly unraveled for the Kings. Mikey Anderson just missed the puck. Um, skating uh, after it was deflected, he went to go track it down uh, after a ricochet. I think it went off Kevin Fiala's skate and into the Kings zone. He went back to get it, and he just missed it. Uh, and Jason Robertson, who is uh, one of the better young snipers in the NHL, scored on a one-timer after that turnover, and it's 2-1 Dallas. So, uh, I mean, look, Mikey Anderson has to be able to corral that puck, but just uh, a, a misplay on his part led to a very good player getting a very good scoring opportunity, and suddenly the Kings are down a goal. A minute 16 later, Tyler Sagan would score to make it 3-1 Dallas, another one of those situations where little things turn into big things. We've talked about it a lot with the Kings this year. So Dallas has a strong shift in the Kings zone and Kings defenseman Alex Edler decides he gets the puck. I'm going to ice it because the, the stars are buzzing around the net. I'm going to try to calm things down. Let us kind of take a deep breath, get a face off and we'll go from there. Um, and so they get a face off. The Kings get the puck. They kind of clear it. They clear it out of the zone, but it goes into the star zone at around the blue line. And because this is the second period and it's the Kings long bench, uh, they Tried to make a change. A couple guys got off, but it was a bit of a scramble. And the Stars were able to counterattack. And Rasmus Kupari was scrambling off the bench to get back in the play as he was changing for Andre Kopitar. He was a bit out of control, skating full speed to try and get back defensively in the play. Uh, Tyler Sagan was able to, to kind of skate around him and uh, avoid uh, diving Alex Edler and score to make it 3-1. to one. Again, little things turning into big things. In that situation, you can understand why Alex Edler would want to do what he did. Like, like I said, things are, are kind of out of control in your own zone. The other team is getting some momentum. So just clear the puck out and uh, live to fight another day. But the reality was he did have time to not ice the puck. He had time to maybe find a, a teammate, uh, maybe hold on to the puck, maybe bounce it off the boards to where it went more into center ice rather than just all the way down the ice. It wasn't at the time when he did it. I understood it. But again, it comes back to bite the Kings because they're tired. Uh, they're trying to make a line change. It doesn't work out. They're kind of scrambling around. It wasn't a terrible line change, but again, when it's the long bench, uh, you're scrambling to get back in because you've got some tired guys on the ice that can't change after an icing. So again, little things sometimes turn into big things um, in hockey. So just 14 seconds later, after that big goal from Tyler Sagan, to make it 3-1, Rasmus Kupari, fumbled the puck at center ice. Robey Hintz had speed, picked it up, came in, scored on a wrist shot, and that made it 4-1. to one. And um, not exactly similar to what the Kings did to St. Louis the night before with the, how they scored those bun goals in bunches in, in the second period to break the game open. But, you know, just some bad luck for the LA Kings, really. You could say a bad decision by Alex Edler, although it wasn't, you know, the worst decision I've ever seen, but just... Uh, things were not going the way of the LA Kings in that very, you know, brief amount of time. And it really came back to obviously affect the game in a big way. Now, later in the second period, scores 4-2. The Kings had a great shift in the Dallas end. The top line came up big, making some big plays, cycling the puck. And Gabe Velarde would draw a cross-checking penalty. And you felt if the Kings could score on this power play, they're right back in the game. And the second power play unit comes over the boards. Uh, some nice passing from Sean Dursey, Philip Deneau to Arthur Kaliev. And uh, they had the Stars penalty killer scrambling. Um, and then a pass down low to Victor Arbitson. He makes a, a very sneaky between the legs kind of a shot pass. And then it was um, Rasmus Kupari getting the rebounding, putting it in. And you're like, all right, 4-2. 
there's still a full, full period to go. We've survived this flurry of goals from the Stars. It's a two-goal game. We've still got, again, a full period to go. All right, feel like we're kind of back in the game. Well, Philip Deneau took a really bad slashing penalty with about two minutes to go. The Stars had a power play for the remainder of the period. The Kings couldn't win a board battle, and it ended up uh, a pass was deflected in front of the net. Jamie Benn gets it. It goes over to Joe Pavelski. He scores 5-3, and it was such a deflating moment for the Kings. After getting that big goal to kind of get them back in the game, you felt like that was a killer late in the period. Two, now you're down uh, five to two, excuse me, not five, three, five, two. You're down three goals going into the third, and that's going to be a major uphill battle. Um, third period, Kings did get a power play about halfway through, but couldn't convert on that. That maybe would give them a glimmer of hope. But overall, um, you know, a pretty kind of nondescript third period. Maybe Dallas sitting on the lead. The Kings um, had some opportunities, but nothing that you would consider like grade A and it ends with the Kings losing five to two um, Dallas who came in oh for their last 13 on the power play scored three power play goals. Uh, three of their four goals came with the man advantage Dallas outshot LA 40 to 32 in the game. And ironically, the only period the Kings had more shots than Dallas was that second period where they're outscored four to two, uh, but the Kings are back at 500 now six and six on the season. Um, I hate to use the uh, back-to-back games on back-to-back nights thing as some kind of excuse, so I'm not going to. Um, could it have been a factor in this game as far as the Kings not having the legs that they would otherwise? Maybe. But I didn't look at that game and think uh, that the Kings didn't have um, the energy level that they needed to have. I thought, that I thought honestly, for the, a lot of this game, I thought it was a pretty even game. I thought the first period was pretty even. The third period was even, and then there was just that that span of four or five minutes in the second period where things got a little bit loose for the Kings, and it ended up costing them big time. Um, in the moment, I was watching this game and getting frustrated with you know the goals going in one after another. I actually went back and watched the game again, knowing our, obviously what was going to happen, and just more examining kind of what led to the goals and. I do, honestly, I kind of feel like the Kings just had some bad luck there. We talked about the bobble of the puck by Mikey Anderson, the bobble of the puck by Rasmus Kupari and allowing, you know, the the Stars to get a loose puck and get a good scoring chance. So, you know, there is there is an old saying that you make your luck, right? You you, with hard work and skating hard, you could, you know, more often than not, lucky bounces are going to find your, you know, your go your way. But, um, you know, I I was obviously I'm not happy with the result, never going to be happy with the result. Um, but not super disappointed, frankly, because of the way the Kings played. And maybe that's just me. Maybe you feel differently. But we've talked about the Kings trending in the right direction, playing the right way. I thought they did that more often than not in this game. Were there mistakes? Yes. Were there missed opportunities? Yes. But I still think the Kings are playing a better style of hockey overall um, you know, than what we saw them play earlier in the year against Vegas or Minnesota. Um, you know, they've, they've had some... Uh, miss, missed opportunities and games where they didn't play that well against Pittsburgh and blowing a lead against Washington. That wasn't this, though, to me. I didn't think. Um, I thought, you know, they played better of late against Tampa Bay, Toronto, the the, the great win over St. Louis. Um, again, not happy with the result. Could they have played better? Absolutely. Um, but I, I don't know. My takeaway from this game was All right, it it was one of those games that just didn't go the Kings' way. Um, Yes, uh, Philip Deneau took a bad penalty, a bad slashing penalty, led to kind of the dagger goal in this one. That's something that could be avoided. Um, But just the the fumbling of the puck here and there, kind of the puck luck not going the Kings' way, kind of seemed like that for me in this one. Now, we'll see how they bounce back against Chicago after a day off. But I'm not ready. We have seen the Kings, as I said in the open, two steps forward, one step back. And that's been the Kings so far. It's why they're a 500 team on the season. They're still trying to figure things out. Uh, I still think they're moving in the right direction. Now that could change based on what they do against Chicago, but I'm still, I'm not ready to say, oh crap, we all that momentum we gained by beating Tampa Bay and Toronto and, and St. Louis is all, now it's back to square one again. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, it was a step back, maybe a half step back, but they can take another step forward against Chicago coming up, close out the homestand, going two and one, head back home, and, and again, starting to feel a little bit better about their play. But that that is dependent on what they do 
against Chicago. So we will see how it goes. But I'm just, I'm saying disappointed with the result, obviously. Um, but I don't think it was as bad as it might seem. When you allow five goals, you're like, oh man, that's another bad defensive game. But it just didn't seem like it was one of those games that went the Kings way. We'll see how it goes uh, going forward. We need to talk about Kings goalie, Cal Peterson, who has obviously been a big subject uh, for LA Kings fans and a big subject on this show uh, so far this season. And we're going to do that in just a second. But first, we need a Built Bar timeout. I need to tell you about the new amazing flavors that Built Bar has to offer. How about Cookie Dough Topper? Coconut Brownie Bar, Coconut Brownie Topper, White Chocolate Peppermint Granola, and Candy Cane Brownie Puff. They're getting ready for the holiday season. Apparently, uh, they are all filling and they are all insanely tasty. Uh, They are the best tasting protein bars ever built. See what I did there? Uh, You can even order a mixed box and try all five flavors for yourself. Uh, You can also get 15% off because you are a listener of the Locked On LA Kings show. Uh, So uh, go to built.com. Use the promo code Locked On 15 and get 15% off your order. Uh, try out delicious Built Bars. They are good for you and they taste great. Again, Built.com. Use the promo code Locked On 15 and get 15% off of your order. All right, let's talk about the performance of goalie Cal Peterson. He'll have five goals on 40 shots, but I thought overall, kind of like what I thought about the game not as bad as it would seem on the surface. When you allow five goals, you're like, well, that's a bad performance by the goalie. But I don't know that that was the case for Cal Peterson. I thought he had a pretty solid first and third period. He came up with some some big saves. It could have been worse. There was a breakaway uh, opportunity for Dallas that he made a save on. There was a turnover by Sean Dursey. We're going to talk more about him in a minute uh, that he made a big save on. That could have been a, a goal for Dallas as well. So, um I, I don't think we were talking about the Kings trending in the right direction. And also a, along those lines uh, for individuals, uh, Cal Peterson trending in the right direction. I think this is still a step in the right direction for Cal. Um, I don't, you know, when I'm looking at goaltenders, I'm looking at, do they allow soft goals? Do they allow big rebounds? Uh, you know, do, do they not cover the puck in certain opportunities? Are they not positioned well in net? Are they off their post? Things like that. Do they come out and play the puck and misplay it? Um, I didn't see any of that for Cal. Um, I thought, again, he made some quality saves. Um, I thought the scoring opportunities for Dallas, like we talked about the three of them coming on the power play. So obviously there's a man advantage there. Um, I, maybe the first goal that, that he allowed in wasn't, you know, the greatest, most dangerous scoring opportunity that there's been. It was somewhat of a routine shot, but it did come from a, from a good player. Um, but I thought overall, I thought Cal was okay. I thought, um, Again, he was put in some difficult situations and you can make the argument that, you know, your elite goalies need to make some game changing type saves when they're put in those situations. Of course, is Cal Peterson an elite goalie? No. Um, So it's difficult to say he needs to make those kinds of saves that sometimes we'll see that can be game game changing types of saves. So overall, um, I thought Cal played pretty good. Um, Certainly. Um, two solid periods, the first and the third. And then there was that, again, just like with the Kings, there was that moment or you know group of minutes in the second period where things got a little bit ragged and out of control and he was put in some tough situations. But I think overall, I, I was okay with the performance of Cal Peterson. I'm not laying this loss on the, on the feet of, of Cal Peterson. Um, I don't think it was, when you go back and you look at the goals scored, I don't think those were soft goals. I don't think that there were any real misplays on his part um, that you could say, you know, he's not trending in the right direction. So I think it was, it's hard to say a, a five gold game allowed is a positive step. I won't go that far, but I don't think it was a step back. I guess I'll put it that way. I, I, I'm kind of saying the same thing with the Kings. Maybe it's a, maybe a little bit of a step back, but not something to where we think, oh no, uh, we still are, you know, Cal's really trending in the wrong direction. I'm not ready to say that after this start for Cal Peterson. Uh, I've talked about it a lot, uh, mentioned it early in the year. I think the Kings top line needs to be their best line more often than not. They need to lead the LA Kings and they did not do that last night against the stars. Gabe Velarde had a very quiet game. Uh, he did draw a penalty at one point, um, but really didn't have uh, many good scoring chances. Um, and look, we can't expect him to score goals every night. Um, but it was unusual for a guy who's playing so hot at the moment to see him so kind of uninvolved. Um, but overall, the top line uh, didn't get the job done. No points from Kempe Kopitar or Velarde. Um, that needs to change going forward against Chicago. Those guys need to be 
better either at even strength or as a part of the Kings number one power play unit. Um, okay. It finally happened. Uh, Brant Clark played his ninth NHL game. And in that ninth game, he uh, did see some action on the Kings second power play unit overall thought he looked pretty good. Uh, he did take a hit from Jamie Ben in the third period and looked like he may have lost a tooth on an accidental hit in the face from Ben stick. Um, some people thought Jamie Ben took a run at Brent Clark. I don't think that was the case. I think Brent needs to kind of protect himself at all times. It was a collision. Jamie Ben got his arm up to kind of protect himself and, and Brent didn't. So he took kind of the worst of it, but, um, looks like he's going to be okay. But as you well know, it is now the ninth game for Brent Clark. So the decision time for the LA Kings. And as of the recording of this show, we have heard nothing regarding Brant Clark and a transaction about him being sent down to his junior team. So we'll see if he's on the ice tomorrow against Chicago. If he is, the first year of his entry-level contract kicks in, and he will stay with the LA Kings for the rest of the season. So two questions that we've asked about this from the beginning with Brent Clark. Is him staying with the LA Kings the best for his development going forward? And is this the best for the LA Kings? Is he, is he an asset to them now? Because they're not in a rebuild. They're looking to win games now. They're looking to be a playoff team. Can he help them get to where they want to be? I think the answer is yes to that. And I think the answer of, is this best for his development? I think the answer is yes for that as well. I think he is growing. He is getting better. And frankly, I trust him more than I trust Sean Dursey. Sean Dursey has, it started with that game against Vegas, the awful turnover behind his own net that led to the goal that that prevented the Kings from getting into overtime and getting a point and giving the Vegas Golden Knights a win. He's had a few moments in games where he's had just awful turnovers. and. I don't trust him right now, frankly. I hope that improves at some point going forward, but he is continuing to make some pretty glaring mistakes um, in situations where they don't need to be, uh, where he's not under pressure, where he has time to look for a teammate or to clear the puck out of the zone, and he's not doing it. So, um, like I said, I, I, I will, I would put, I would have Brant Clark as my sixth defenseman right now, and I would have Sean Dursey um, as the guy on the bench who is going to spell some of the other defensemen going forward and he's there if there's an injury. But um, I, th I think, I think uh, Brent Clark is going to stay. We'll see officially uh, tomorrow if he's uh, in the lineup or not, that makes it official. But uh, I am in, I am in favor of Brent Clark staying with the LA Kings this season. I, I think it's best for his development going forward. And I think he can help the Kings win games. So we shall see if the Kings agree or disagree uh, with that assessment going forward. It does seem like most indications are, Brent Clark is going to stay in the NHL. A uh, quick note on what's coming up for the Kings on tomorrow's show in a moment. But first, once again, I want to let you know, thank you for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts that in give you insights that only Locked On can provide. That's Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so coming up tomorrow, a uh, big game for the LA Kings. They'll be in Chicago to take on a very surprising Blackhawks team. If you haven't noticed, and we'll talk more about this on tomorrow's show, the Blackhawks are actually playing well. And if you haven't paid attention to what they're doing in the offseason, they completely blew up their roster. They traded away good young players for draft picks. They're in a full-on rebuild. Uh, they're not looking to win games, frankly. But they are. So credit to their players uh, for not caring what management's direction is and going out and competing and playing well. So uh, this may not be quite the pushover that we thought it would be necessarily when we looked at the schedule at the start of the season because the Blackhawks are playing some decent hockey. Uh, we'll get you more details on that coming up on tomorrow's show. Uh, face off in Chicago coming up on Thursday, 5.30 p.m. It will be televised on Valley Sports West and on the Kings iHeart Radio Network as well. So again, on tomorrow's show, a uh, full preview of what's going on with uh, the Kings taking on the Blackhawks. Uh, we may have an update officially on Brant Clark. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, and also um, probably have some time for some emails if you want to send uh, an email and get it read on the show and uh, you have something you want to say about what the Kings are doing. Uh, the email address is LockedOnEddy at gmail.com, E-D-D-I-E, LockedOnEddy at gmail.com. We're on Twitter at LockedOnLAKings and uh, Instagram as well at LockedOnLAKings. Again, thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen today. Your second listen again should be Locked on Sports today from games that matter most to the biggest sports stories. Go beyond the scoreboard and beyond the scenes with local experts that only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports today available 
on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. I am Eddie Garcia. Thank you so much for watching and listening to Locked On LA Kings. We'll talk to you tomorrow. And as always, we close out the show by saying, Go Kings Go.